All right, it is 2.30, so we will get started. My name is Rob Elkins. I'm here with David Watkins, um, ArcGIS Pro Product Manager, and Corey Kramer, who is the ArcGIS Pro Customer Advocate. So he represents you, um, customers, users of ArcGIS Pro, and he's embedded inside the development team in Redland so he can be your voice, and it is a strong voice, and he is definitely one of your champions um, to help um, improve the software. So we're going to talk about ArcGIS Pro in Effective License Management. Um, I was actually pleased that this year they put us all the way down here in the small rooms, meaning maybe this wasn't such a challenging topic, um, but we are glad that you're here and um, can get this information. When talking about Pro, I just want to first, though, take a step back and say that Pro is, is how do you get Pro is the product is ArcGIS Desktop. That has not changed. Esri's product that you buy, that you license, is ArcGIS Desktop, which includes ArcGIS Pro and ArcMap. And when an Esri employee says ArcMap, they also mean Arc Catalog. If you have the 3D Analyst extension, that means Scene and Globe. So normally, as soon as I say that, the next question is, is ArcGIS Pro a replacement for ArcMap? And because um, you get both of them now, and that you'll continue to get both of them, but eventually it will replace ArcMap. When really depends on you and, and your workflows. We're going to support ArcMap for many years. Some may retire before ArcMap retires in this room, but um, we, so we'll have minor updates, and, but eventually the day will come when 32-bit applications like ArcMap do fade away, just like 16-bit applications did. Um, ArcMap will continue with updates and releases. They are minor updates as our focus is on Pro. Um, there is the ArcMap 10.6 release, which happened in January. 10.6.1 is released uh, next week, July 17th in English. And then the non-English version will come out in September. And then um, announcing here today or yesterday, Jack announced that 10.7 is um, planned and well underway for um, Q1 2019. If you have questions about the product lifecycle, um, there's a link here. You'll get um, probably this link, but you can just Google desktop product lifecycle. It'll take you to the lifecycle of ArcMap. So it's, we're going to focus on ArcGIS Pro, this newer application. And I say newer because it has been out now for three, over three years. We've had several releases, the current release being version 2.2. And um, those that came in early heard the nice soothing voice of ArcGIS Pro 2.2, what's new? And um, there's many, if you just do an internet search or a YouTube search for what's new in 2.2, you'll get videos, web pages, blogs, and lots of information because it's already out there. If you, one of the great features, well, some people feel it's a great feature of ArcGIS Pro, is that we notify you when updates are available. Has everyone experienced that? Um, you can turn it off. And, I, and it's important to know that this is a notification of an op update. Esri will never update your software for automatically. You still have to make that choice. Um, but you probably should have seen in the last little bit, or if you haven't, um, Fired Up Pro in the last uh, two weeks, when you do, it'll tell you that 2.2 is available. Now, how you get 2.2 or any version of Pro, as you mentioned, is you purchase ArcGIS Desktop. ArcGIS Desktop is um, licensed at three levels. Nothing new here, but I just want to set the context for everybody. Basic, standard, and advanced. Now, translating that to um, those that have been at the user conference for many years, basic used to be called ArcView. Standard used to be called Arc Editor. And what did advanced, what was, what was advanced called? Arc Info. This crowd knows it, yeah. These are desktop users. Um, ArcGIS Desktop is licensed really in three ways how you purchase this license of basic, standard, or advanced. You can purchase a perpetual license. This means there's no expiration date and you buy the software, you continue to pay maintenance to get updates and support, and um, you can use it in as long as you want. There's also a term copy of ArcGIS Desktop which isn't nearly as popular as the Perpetual, but it is out there for a lower price. You can buy an annual subscription, which gets you access um, to, to ArcGIS Pro, but only for that annual time period, that 12 month period. Then you would need to renew it each year to keep using the software. So there is access up until a specified date. 
The other way people purchase ArcGIS Pro via ArcGIS Desktop is through these special agreements. These are enterprise agreements, educational agreements with universities or with K through 12 programs, NGOs, nonprofit programs. Esri has many special agreements in which how you um, acquire your software. Um, we are not going to go into the purchasing process much today, but if you do have questions about that, we can help get you in contact with the appropriate account manager in our business development team. So whether you purchase desktop basic, standard, or advanced, perpetual, or term, then you have your next set of choices. Is did you purchase a concurrent use? Concurrent use is extremely popular here at the user conference and it is only available as a perpetual license. And we'll go into more about concurrent use. There's also single use, which is perpetual or term. And then introduced about three and a half years ago, the named user licensing type, which is term. So that's what we're gonna go into today. So named user, single use, and concurrent use. Um, first we'll talk about ArcGIS Pro licensing with um, single use. So the key with single use, as you know, is it's locked to your machine. So you can get pro single use, you purchase desktop single use, you get a single use license file for ArcMap and a separate single use license file for ArcGIS Pro. It's locked to your machine. You can be connected, disconnected to the network. You can um, still log in with your identity to ArcGIS um, Enterprise or ArcGIS Online and pull down base maps and services, but your license is, is secure on your machine as long as your machine is secure. The most popular type probably here for the, at the user conference is concurrent use. Uh, many of you have used concurrent use with um, ArcMap for years. Um, very popular since it's been around since the ARC Info workstation days. Um, if you don't know what that is, we're talking about the 80s. Um, so it's a perpetual license. It requires a license manager. So this is a separate piece of software that runs normally on a server, on a network server, or somewhere that um, many machines can access. The benefit of the concurrent use license, if you buy one concurrent use license, David, Corey, and myself can all share that license. However, only one of us can use it at a time. So when David logs in, he's the first to get it. Corey and I have to wait until David shuts down the application, releases that license. It is, um, or does require the, the latest version of the license manager to use concurrent use with Pro. Um, it is a separate provisioning file license feature in your license manager separate from um, desktop and um, it's, it is available to all ArcGIS desktop concurrent use customers and any new customers. You can buy additional copies of concurrent use. Now the default experience for ArcGIS Pro is named user and so when you, when you purchase desktop concurrent use or single use, by default, we're gonna give you a named user license of ArcGIS Pro. So the first thing we wanna talk show you is, is if you wanted to continue to use concurrent use, how you would convert that named user license to a concurrent use license. All right, Corey, you gonna walk yeah. us through this? Yeah, I'll jump in here and uh, I'll talk a little bit about the conversion process and then some of my role here in the, in the presentation will be to actually demo some of this stuff. Um, so like Rob said, by default, you're gonna get named user licenses. In order to convert those into um, either single use or concurrent use, we need you to go to myesri, so my.esri.com and under that uh, licensing tab, you'll see the um, Convert ArcGIS Pro Named User Licenses. Okay, so there's a button there. You click that, and you'll see there's, there's a user interface. It's very easy to understand. You'll see the, the total number of licenses that you have. So in this case, we have 50, 50 licenses. We want to convert some of those. And so we can say how many we want to convert. In this case, we're going to convert um, five of those licenses and once that's done, it could take a few minutes, up to 30 minutes for those to show up, but eventually you're gonna get either your ESU, your single use license, or your EFL, your floating license, okay? So either your single use or concurrent use. You'll get that number, you'll also be emailed that number, and you can take one step further and uh, actually generate a provisioning file. Um, so that's, that's the conversion process, it's actually pretty easy. And um, we'll go to the next slide. 
and then switch over. So I'm actually going to demo um, using single use and concurrent use. So well, before Corey gets to that, so my Esri is available to um, most customers. However, there are select people inside your organization that have access. Sometimes not everybody has access to my Esri. If you are outside the United States you, and you do not know what we're talking about regarding my Esri, contact your distributor, your local Esri representative, and they can do this for you. They can convert your named user default licenses to concurrent use, if you own concurrent use, um, to be able to use it with Pro. All right, so back now to the demo. Okay, thanks, Rob. Um, so when we first launch ArcGIS Pro, like we said, by default, um, it's going to be looking for a named user license. So you'll see this sign-in dialog. Now, if you've already converted your licenses, so you have that single use or concurrent use license, we would just go down here to configure your licensing options. And that's going to bring up this dialog, right? So I can either switch it to single use or concurrent use right here. So I'll choose single use in this case. Now, I've already, I've already authorized this before. If you hadn't, this wouldn't be here, you would go to authorize. And at this point, this is going to launch that software authorization wizard, which actually looks very familiar if you've ever, ever done this with ArcMap. Um, so you, if we were to follow through this first option, um, this would be if you copied the ESU number down, we'd want to authorize using the internet. And then we'd um, get to a point where we enter that ESU. Okay. Once we do that, uh, Pro is authorized uh, with a single use license. Now, if we went ahead and um, generated that provisioning file, we could browse to the provisioning file, and that will uh, pre populate those forms for us. All right, so that's how we would, that's how we would set this up as a single use, um, single use license. Now I'll switch over and talk a little bit about um, how you would set up the concurrent use license. Remember, Rob already mentioned that uh, you would need the license server administrator. Okay, so again, this is the same license server administrator that you'd be using for ArcMap. Um, and in this case, you can see that I have the 2018.0 version. Okay, so this version of uh, license manager will serve licenses back to anything from 1061 back, I think even maybe to the to eight um, for ArcMap, um, and then any of the Pro um, versions. Okay, so you'd simply come in here, and now you're going to authorize your EFL license on that license manager. Okay, so we would choose um, Pro and we'd go ahead and authorize. And it's really just going to take us to that same experience where we're going through that software authorization wizard. Um, and either, again, we can kind of manually um, go through the steps to enter the EFL number, or if we actually generated a provisioning file um, for that EFL, we can browse to that provisioning file just as we did um, for the single use. and browse to that, enter it there, and use that. So I'm going to go ahead and um, go back and authorize um, with the single use. I'll switch over to a single use license and complete that process. And I want to show you what it, what it looks like then when, when we actually open up ArcGIS Pro and what that, what that experience looks like. Okay, so we'll come back here. We'll go ahead and switch it over to the single use license. Okay. So notice that when we're signed in with a single use license, um, or sorry, when we authorize with a single use license, we're not actually signed in to any kind of portal. There's no licensing portal at that point. Okay. Um, the, the point I want to make here, um, I've heard some custo customers maybe be a, a bit confused um, about the difference between named user and actually being able to use WebGIS, right? We talk a lot about the WebGIS pattern. Um, so at this point, I just want to be clear that you can authorize ArcGIS Pro using a single use license or a concurrent use license, and you're still able to sign into a portal, okay? So you still are able to use portal content um, and share out to a portal. It's just that you're no longer um, relying on 
on the named user for the license. Okay, so we can see a little bit about that here. Um, I'm using a single use license if I look at my licensing tab and I can go to my portals and see that I'm not signed into anything but I can go ahead and sign into a portal. Okay, so that's, that's a little bit about actually doing the conversion and then what the experience would look like once you actually light up Pro with one of those licenses. All right, this session is being recorded and is also being streamed back to Esri offices all over the country. So we're, we're going to hold questions to the end where you actually talk because we don't want to, um, they have a hard time hearing you. But we are going to do a little bit of exercise here post, of, post lunch where you're going to raise your hand potentially. Um, how many people have already deployed ArcGIS Pro in their organization? Okay, so most of the room, maybe 80%. How many people are authorizing ArcGIS Pro with concurrent use? Okay, single use? Almost equal there, single use and current use. And what about named user? Okay, so that's the majority. And, and, and actually, while I said concurrent use is very popular amongst the user conference, that's because many of you have concurrent use licenses of desktop. You get a free pass to the user conference, and that's why many um, organizations are able to send a lot of people. But just like this room, named user is by far the most popular way. Now, I said that in one of the sessions before, and they said, well, Rob, that's because it's the default. That's true. It is the default. It was designed from, for named user, single use, and concurrent use. But named user being the default does mean that the majority, um, nearly 80% of all ArcGIS Pro is um, authorized with named user. Named user is based on an identity, an identity in an ArcGIS Online organization or ArcGIS Enterprise. Now, ArcGIS Enterprise is a product that um, was formerly referred to as ArcGIS Server when it gained portal and organization capabilities um, for, collect, for managing content and people with identities. It was renamed um, about two years ago as ArcGIS Enterprise. And um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that here and then really go into some effective ways to leverage the named user licensing model with online or with enterprise um, to help you manage your ArcGIS Pro licenses. Many of you already know this because it, it sounds like you're using it, but if you don't know, I think one of the biggest benefits and by design of ArcGIS Pro named user licensing is that you can use it anywhere at any time as long as you have a connection. But we'll tell you if you don't how to do that. You can also access it on any machine, meaning I can install ArcGIS Pro at home, I can install it on um, a VM, I can install it on my laptop, on my desktop, and I can log in and actually use up to three of those machines at the same time. And it only is using my one desktop license. So this is different from concurrent use, different from single use. But it is for, that license is for me. It's tied to me and my login and password. Just like I wouldn't give David my login and password to my Facebook account or my Instagram account or my bank account, I'm not going to give you my ArcGIS Pro login either, David. And so this, um, even though I can do it on three machines, it's still tied to me. We think three is very generous. For those of you that are able to work on more than three machines at the same time, I'd like to hear how you do that with only two hands. Um, but we know that many times you are working on multiple machines. Um, for the administrator, one of the great benefits is that the administrator of these licenses are able to grant the license by, per, you know, by the user. They can know who I gave the license to. I can control whether they have basic, standard, or advanced, what if they have a spatial analyst or network analyst or 3D analyst. I can reassign those as needed and I can know who's doing what when. I can even log in and see when they last logged into ArcGIS Pro. So maybe I've assigned an advanced license to somebody and I see they haven't actually logged in in six weeks. I could, I could revoke that license and uh, assign it to somebody else. And as I mentioned, this can be an ArcGIS Online, so you can leverage the cloud to um, be your, basically your license server in the cloud, or you can use ArcGIS Enterprise behind your own firewall. Um, 
All right, so Corey's going to guide us through um, a little bit about uh, kind of like the, we'll call it the user's guide, getting started with um, using ArcGIS Online and then show us a few demos. Yeah, thanks Rob. So we are going to go through some slides first just to kind of lay down some understanding on what needs to happen before we can um, work with the licenses in ArcGIS Online um, and get Pro started with those. Um, the first important thing is that uh, you're going to receive an authorization email. And this is really important because if you don't do anything with this, then you won't be able to, uh, you won't have an ArcGIS Online account to work inside of. Okay, so you do need to first activate your ArcGIS Online organization. Um, now, a tip here is that um, the person who receives the email does not have to be the person who activates the organization. Okay, so whoever gets that email, if, if you're, thinking, oh, I, I'm not going to be the person who's the administrator of this. I don't want to do this. You can forward that email to somebody else and they can click the link and go ahead and activate the online organization. So when we talk about named user licensing in ArcGIS Online, um, the very first thing is that we need, before we can assign a license to somebody in the organization, the person has to be a member of the organization. Okay? So before we do anything with licensing, and we'll demo this, we have to um, invite members, and this is through the overview tab. There's a members tile. If you're familiar with ArcGIS Online, this changed a little bit in the, in the recent update. So now we have tiles, and it's uh, kind of right on your front, front page there to be able to invite members. Members do need a level two account. So we'll walk through that. Um, during our demonstrations. Right. So level two, some of you may not know what that means. Um, there are two different level types of ArcGIS Online users. A level one is um, only able to view content created by other people. And um, ArcGIS Pro users are more than just viewers. They're actually editing and creating and have a lot of advanced functionality. So you need to have the level two level, which um, was the default prior to last year. Level one was introduced last year, the read-only level. Um, level two is the traditional named user that you're probably accustomed to. And every copy of ArcGIS Desktop includes one level two user. Okay. So that's the, a good segue into helpful terms, right? So that you, you understand levels. We need level two. Now, in ArcGIS Online, we also have roles and groups, and right? So I'm going to show in my demonstration how we can leverage roles and groups um, to really help us assign and, and, and manage and track our licenses. Um, session, Rob talked about this a little bit when we, when we say you can use ArcGIS and Pro, uh, Pro with the same username in th on three different machines, that's what we call a session, right? So each um, authorization on a machine is a session, but I can open up multiple instances on that machine and those aren't multiple sessions. Okay, so I could have five instances of Pro, five projects open on one machine and that's one session. Okay. Um, portal. Right? This could either be um, your connection to ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. And um, we'll, we'll show you again in the demo. We already showed it very, very briefly, but we'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, there's a difference between your licensing portal and then your active portal. So I can license through one portal. I could license through ArcGIS Online. And then I could actually connect to an ArcGIS Enterprise portal to be, get my content and publish to that. And so you can do any number of combinations and as we've already talked about, you don't have to use a named user license to still participate in that WebGIS pattern. So understanding that portal concept um, and sort of the flexibility there is important. Um, even with the named user license, you are able to take that license offline. So we'll look at offline licensing and just a helpful tip here that we'll show you is um, that it, it is important and super helpful to the administrator um, if you actually use the workstation alias. Okay, so actually name your machine like work laptop or work desktop. If you take that license offline, we're able to see actually which machine took that license offline. Makes it a lot easier if we have any troubleshooting to do. All right, so 
again, a little precursor here to the demo, we've got a screenshot and some of the things we're going to run through. Um, you either need to be an administrator um, or have a managed licenses privilege. You don't have to be an administrator but you have to have some way, some privilege to actually manage the licenses in online. Um, we're going to show the experience in ArcGIS online so we'll be showing you what the administrator sees, what the administrator experience is in terms of uh, you know, adding, adding users to groups and leveraging roles to assign and uh, ma uh, manage your licenses but we're al also going to show what the user experience is in ArcGIS Pro and when the user does something in Pro what the administrator sees. So we're going we're gonna to try to show both sides so that there's a clear understanding of you know when somebody does something here what does that person see? When the admin does something in online what does the user see? All right, so we're going to jump into the demo. All right, so as Corey gets set up, I'll buy you a little time here to say that you may not be an administrator of your ArcGIS Online organization. And your administrator may be very tightly controlling that organization. Um, you may want to suggest to him that you can help him or her. You don't, they don't have to make you an administrator, but they should give you manage license privileges. If they give you managed license privileges, you'll be able to do many of the things that Corey is going to show you in assigning and revoking and changing ArcGIS Pro licenses in, in, in your organization. I encourage all of kind of the GIS power users to try to get this privilege from their administrator um, and without, they don't have to have all the administrative rights, but managed license is a key privilege that you want to try to get from your, um, your friend, the ArcGIS administrator. All right. All right. Okay, so you're seeing my screen here and I am signed into my ArcGIS Online organization and I am an administrator. Um, so we can first, uh, we, we talked about having to add members. Okay, I have to have members to assign licenses too. Um, so I'm going to come down here to my members uh, tile and I'm going to go ahead and invite members. Um, let me back up one step. Um, I just wanted to show you that um, I told you I'd be working with groups, right? So I've actually created those groups already. So I have a group called Cohort 1 and I have another group called Cohort 2, right? Um, if we look in these, I'm the only person. So I haven't added anybody um, to these yet. Now I've also uh, created roles. So I have like a transportation uh, user role and I have a hydrologist user role. Um, so I'm going to be bringing on different members in different groups and each group has different roles, like different jobs. Okay, so um, it's a very small example, but uh, hopefully it will give you, give you an idea of some of the ways that you can uh, organize things beforehand that will be really helpful um, when it comes time to managing your licenses in Pro. Okay, so we've got a few options. Um, for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and just add add members without sending invites. Now we're able to do this individually so I could manually type, um, type usernames in here. Um, we're also able to do it uh, from a file. Okay, so I've created a couple of CSVs where I have my cohort one and my cohort two. So I'll go ahead and bring that, bring that up and I'll go ahead and upload it. So I'll be able to see um, this is coming from my CSV and uh, this is documented. You just need these, these fields in there, first name, last name, what the email would be. Again, they need to be level two in order to assign a pro license. And you can see that these, these uh, users that I'm bringing on will be doing different things in the organization. So they're going to need some different capabilities, right? Both in their work in ArcGIS Online. So I'm controlling that on the online side, but I'm also going to use this to understand who needs a network analyst license and who might need a spatial analyst license and, and manage the licenses that way. So I'm, uh, this was my cohort one. So I'm going to go ahead and add them to cohort one. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing very quickly with cohort two and then we'll show you how that, how that looks. So very similar. Um, again, I'm only bringing on transportation analysts and hydrologists in my um, little example here, um, but we are putting them into different groups, right? So this, and I've seen this happen at universities where they're, they're managing different cohorts, right? So this, this group comes in and then another group comes in. And so um, this is a, a pretty effective way 
to manage those pro licenses. All right. So once we've done that, we can come in here and we'll look at our members. And under our roles, we can see that we did, in fact, add five hydrologists and five transportation analysts. But remember, we didn't sort them by role. We just, we just added them to groups. And I can tell, um, tell what role they have, right? So at this point, I have my members, and it's time to assign licenses, right? I can see in my organization here that some folks have um, been actively working in there recently. Now, here's the trick. Well, first of all, Corey, I want to say thank you. Your organization has purchased a lot of licenses. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, this is, uh, we use this for some of our documentation. <laughs> so we'll go into the role, and I can um, quickly search and see that I have transportation analysts. And I can quickly tell they don't have pro licenses. So I want to do all of these at the same time. So I'll just go ahead and add them to my list here so that I can configure those. Um, I want all of them to have an advanced license, and since they're working with uh, transportation, I want to make sure that they can uh, use network analyst. So I'll go ahead and assign those. And then we, we can uh, quickly do the same thing with our hydrologists. We'll select all of them, and I want them to have spatial analyst and an advanced license as well. Okay, so we can see here, it's very easy to see that they have the advanced license and an extension, um, but what's the, what's the experience like in ArcGIS Pro? So I had, I had already had this started up, remember, um, but I'm not signed in. Let's come over. I believe I had the single-use license. So what we need to do is come back here and switch it over to named user so that we can, we can do this demonstration. So it's going to ask us to, to restart ArcGIS Pro because it's got to switch the licenses out. So now when we start it using a named user license, it's going to ask us to sign in. Now, I'm going to use, I could do it as the administrator. I had already had a Pro license assigned to myself, but let's take a look at one of the, the users that I just added. So I'm going to be prompted to change the password. Now remember, the administrator knew the password. Okay, it was password 1234. This is a standard security measure. So the administrator will never actually know the password of the users. Um, the administrator can reset passwords, but the administrator won't know the password. Okay, so we'll go ahead. And this and step's only required that first time. The very first time. That you as this user is logging in. Yeah. So I was obviously born in the convention center room 31A. So that's my security question. And once we do that, um, we can see that Mal has uh, now signed in. So we want to jump back over and refresh our licenses tab here. And remember I said that we would look at the experience on both sides. So at this point, I can see as the administrator in ArcGIS Online, even if Mal were in a different country, um, we could see that um, she has signed in within the last 30 minutes and is actively using Pro. So that's what the green means. A little green by the, the username it means in the last 30 minutes they've used the software. So probably not somebody you want to revoke their license for right away. Right. You, you might guess that maybe they're in there doing some work, right? Um, the alias. Um, we can see that she signed in on the work laptop. Okay, so that could be helpful to us if we're if we're trying to figure out, um, you know, if we need to make a decision on on getting that license freed up. Um, now, one thing the administrator can do is terminate that license, right? Essentially, revoke revoke that session, um, terminate the session. Uh, sorry, you're not revoking the license, but you're terminating the session. Okay, so I want that. Yeah, I want that to be clear. Okay, so we terminated the session. That user still has the license, but um, as she's working, Pro will periodically reach out and check to make sure it still has the active license. Um, in this case, as, as that user's working, and she could be working in a map or whatever, at some point it's going to check and oh. say, ArcGIS Pro isn't connected to your licensing portal, um, and you have 60 minutes. Okay, So 
the user does get a notification, it pops up, you have 60 minutes if that session has been terminated. So you can save your work, contact your administrator, um, and figure out why, why they terminated the session. Okay, so that's a little bit of a view as to you know, the administrator side and the user side. Um, now, we also said that we'd look a little bit at the portals uh, a little more in depth. Um, so that's here from the portals tab in ArcGIS Pro. And we can see that I have two enterprise portals, right, that I'm not signed into. And I have ArcGIS online, ArcGIS.com. That is my licensing portal. It's also my active portal, but we can see I'm not signed in. So I could switch my active portal um, to one of these um, other sessions or one of these other um, uh, enterprise portals. All right. For now, I'm going to go ahead and sign in again because I want to I want to show you um, taking the license offline, right? And again, what that what that looks like on both sides. So why would you want to take your license offline? Um, I think, I think this, was, this was something we designed from the very beginning, even though Pro was designed to be a connected application, connected not just to a licensed server or to ArcGIS Online, but to be able to get base maps and content and services from um, ArcGIS Enterprise or ArcGIS Online. However, everywhere does not have the internet. And so if you're working in a field, in a tank, in a truck, in an airplane, um, in a convention center. This convention center has pretty good um, Wi-Fi, but sometimes when you're traveling, you may not have a very good internet connection. So you need to be online first, and then prior to um, leaving your office, leaving your reliable network, you can take your license offline and continue working. Right. So uh, those, those are good reasons. And typically, it's if you, if you know you're going into an area where you can't be connected for an extended period of time, right? You know that beforehand. Um, so we can see that this user has essentially, it's, it's like grabbing kind of a temporary single use license, right? It brings it down onto your machine. Um, and notice I'm getting a warning saying, it's not really a warning, it's more of an info message saying, well, that's fine, you've got it offline. Do you still want to sign into your portal? Okay, so this is kind of that, the analogy would be using a single use license. You can still sign into your portal to use content and share content. I'm not going to sign into my portal because I'm not actually uh, doing any mapping work here. But did, did you say yes, take it offline? It's, it's offline. Okay. So but he's I'm offline. not signing back into the portal. So here's some consequences of that decision. Now Corey has, you know, has burned a little license file onto that laptop. He cannot log in to two other machines with, the, with his user. You know, so um, remember we said with pro named user, you can log in on up to three machines. But when you go offline, you are now dedicating it to that one piece of hardware. Right. And so this would be the administrator's experience, right? So that user decided, I'm going to take that license offline. The administrator, it's probably a good idea to periodically check. You can see that Mall took the license offline. They're in disconnected mode. Um, but we can see that it was taken offline on the work laptop. Okay, so if we go to that session, we can see that the work laptop is disconnected. So if you have users that really don't have a reason to be taking a license offline, they're not using laptops, they're not taking those laptops out into the field, um, and you want a little more control, um, there's no reason in your mind that that user should be taking that license offline. As an administrator, you are able to dis disable offline usage. And in that case, the user experience in Pro simply would be that they're not able to check that box. And this is a relatively new feature for ArcGIS Online and, and ArcGIS Pro where administrators have the ability to disable um, offline licenses. That's right. So that's, uh, that's mainly what I wanted to demo. Just to, to recap, um, again, a big tip is that beforehand, if you do know you're going to be adding more, uh, more than one member at a time, right, it's pretty easy to set up a CSV file and um, pre-populate what role you would want to assign them to. Um, that makes it really easy to, um, to add them to groups and assign licenses in bulk. Um, using the search and filter, so 
We'll come back here, refresh this. Um, remember using that search and filter when we're looking at the, um, the roles. That's really helpful. Uh, so I, did, I only did it by roles, but I could come in here and find, find my groups as well. So leverage that um, as part of your, you know, your best practices um, because that makes it really easy to, again, to bulk manage licenses. Um, one other thing that can be helpful um, if you are the administrator is to set up the, the contact link, okay? Um, this mail to, this will set up your email address. And so the user experience then, if they're having problems, um, they can hit the contact us and they'll, they'll be able to send you an email saying I'm having problems with my license. Um, otherwise, in larger organizations um, with hundreds of users, they may not know who the ArcGIS Online Administrator is. And we made some, um, some big improvements in the error messaging that we give. So when a user's not able, for whatever reason, if it's not authorizing with their, with their named user, we're giving very specific messages about why they're not, why that username isn't working, right? And some of those ask the user to contact the organization administrator. Um, so setting up this contact link is very helpful to your users. Yep, and I just saw, I was actually in the showcase this morning and this came up and um, we ch I showed them this and they talked about, they, they kind of dinged, it came to them, oh, I'll set up an alias, an email alias, so they don't, they don't want to give out their personal email address. Sure. They can, they, you could set up an alias, you know, pro licenses at myorg.com and, and so that um, your team of license administrators can help with that. Okay, let's go back to number four. All right, so um, Corey and I and David have talked a lot about um, licensing over the last couple years as we've introduced named user. And there's three or four almost common questions that we always get in these sessions. So we're just going to knock those out right now and then um, give you a chance to ask some of your questions if you'd like in front of the group or um, we can turn off the mics, stop the broadcast and cover them um, kind of individually. Um, the one point about that is that um, Anything unique to your organization in terms of business, in terms of um, um, which, you know, the number of licenses you have or don't have, um, we may need to get your account manager involved with that. So the core first question that we always get is, um, you've been disconnected from ArcGIS Online. Um, you get that message that says that you've been disconnected. What's going on? And um, this could happen for a couple of reasons. Corey actually gave you a couple, is that um, your license could have been um, reassigned or revoked, or you know, the administrator may have changed your permissions. If, you're, if it says that you've, you've lost your connection to your ArcGIS Online um, licensing portal, You've got uh, 60 minutes, as Corey showed, you'll be notified, and you have 60 minutes to be able to continue to working and then save your work. After 60 minutes, you'll be, um, ProArcGIS Pro will shut down, and then you'll need to contact your administrator there. So that's a message that comes up a lot as administrators are kind of learning and maybe kind of messing up what's happening on the back end. Um, the other question that comes up is there's a little bit of concern about being dependent on the internet here for your license. So what happens if you lose a license connection? Um, if you lose a license, um, if you lose your connection to the internet, yes, you no longer are able to verify yourself. So if the software is already started up, you had a connection, you verified, then you are good for 24 hours. Um, during that 24 hours, you'll be able to continue to work However, you won't be able to access any online services. You won't be able to publish any maps to online because you don't have an internet connection. Um, after 24 hours without the internet, what happens to us? Some of us go into withdrawals. And, we cease um, to exist. Yeah, we cease to exist. There, there might be larger problems in the world if there's no internet for more than 24 hours. But what will happen to the ArcGIS Pro instance is you'll be asked to save your work and the application will shut down. So if you know you're going to be offline without the internet for more than 24 hours, simply take your license offline. Which goes to then, um, you need to take your license offline. I think Corey showed that, we talked about it. It's absolutely um, very appropriate, very um, possible to do. Um, however, some administrators have expressed concern um, their first concern was they don't want their users to do that because they, they might want to reassign that license to somebody else. So the administrator can control that. 
The next question then goes, how long can I keep my license offline? You can actually keep it offline for the duration of your subscription. So um, for RGS desktop users, you're on annual maintenance, so it could be up to 12 months that you can keep your license offline. Um, at this point, we, we do not have a way to limit that to a shorter period of time. That is an enhancement request that's under consideration for the administrator to be able to say, you can take it offline, but only for seven days or only for 30 days. That is something that we're considering. Now that you've taken your license offline, some people then get into a little bit of trouble. The employee leaves the company and the um, laptop is destroyed. So what, what happens if you're unable to get that license back? Because you have to be back online to be able to check it back into your online organization, whether it's enterprise or online. And if that laptop is gone or the employee is gone, what do you do? Um, because, you know, we all know ArcGIS Desktop Advance is not cheap software. That, that's valuable um, software. So we do have a way to you to do that. Um, you know, if you're, you need to contact Esri, um, tech support, and they'll work with customer service. You'll need to, um, you know, certify that that machine was destroyed or the employee is gone. I think they call it a certificate of destruction. Mm -hmm. Very, very formal name yeah, that's that you'll be asked name. to agree to, a certificate of destruction. We'll basically declare that license destroyed and then they will then add a new license into your organization that you can um, then start assigning and reassigning to users. Um, so that, that's, so there is a way to do that. It does happen. We've all had um, laptops that have had to be completely wiped and reinstalled everything on it, or we've lost a laptop or had an employee um, go AWOL on us. Um, your license is not lost forever. So contact Corey and his team and they can help you with that. Uh, then another common question has to do with extensions. Well, just as Corey was assigning a spatial analyst or a network analyst extension, you can, um, through that same user interface, assign any of the extensions available in ArcGIS Pro. Here is the list of the current extensions. This is just about everything that ArcMap has now. Um, we're, we're continuing to add more in the future, those, those final few extensions and maybe even some new extensions. Extensions um, can be reassigned, so I can remove it from somebody and give it to somebody else whenever the administrator of the licenses um, feels like they want to do that. Now that user interface, we spent a lot of effort in trying to design a very simple user interface for managing licenses. And there's even been improvements with the June update of ArcGIS Online, and those will be in the portal, upcoming portal release with ArcGIS Enterprise. However, everything that Corey just showed can be automated. There is an API to script, license administration, inviting users, adding users to groups, um, setting the roles, assigning licenses, revoking licenses, and um, I know uh, many customers are starting to automate this process through scripting. Um, here's a knowledge base article which um, gives you, which has the link to the, the documentation for license um, automation through um, um, scripting. So as ArcGIS Pro continues to advance and roll on, I just want to give you a quick um, little preview of, of what's next. We do have a road ahead session um, this afternoon, I think at 4.30, and then again on Friday morning. And there's many sessions throughout the week on everything from getting started to migrating to editing to 3D to map making, geocoding, tons of ArcGIS Pro topics. Um, ArcGIS Pro is kind of following a release cadence of about two releases, two um, update releases a year, and then some patches in between. So we just had the 2.2 release, which added new capabilities and new functionality. Then we'll have the 2.2.1 release. That's, think of that as like a service patch. No new functionality. It's really addressing issues that you report or that we find as we're always testing and, and fixing um, issues. Um, Corey tells me he likes to call them issues instead of bugs. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll they're, not, they're not all bugs. They're not all bugs, <laughs> but they're issues. And so we want to address those issues. Um, so there will be a 2.2.1. Um, you'll get notified when it's available in, in about a month or so, and you can just install it. There could even be a 2.2.2 and when if we need to. Um, the great thing about the Pro Architecture is we can push those updates out very quickly to you. Then the next big release will be, um, there'll be a beta 
um, in Q4, you're all invited to join the beta. Um, go to GeoNet or stay on the, the pro social media sites and you'll find out about um, how to join the beta. Let me give you a tip to join the beta. There is an application. All you have to do to get in is to be a customer, have a desktop license, which I think almost all of you meet those first two, and then you just have to answer some questions about how you're going to use pro. And um, we'll, we'll then accept you into the beta program and you'll get um, beta 1, beta 2, get a release candidate. And then Pro 2.3 is currently planned for um, you know, Q1 of 2019. Based on your feedback last year, we started publishing a, a public roadmap for what's coming next in ArcGIS Pro. Yeah, um, this is a GeoNet document now, not a blog post, but a document. There's a, a kind of a short URL, esriurl.com slash pro roadmap will take you there. But near term means really the next one or two releases. Um, Midterm means kind of the next two or three releases. Long term is kind of more research projects, things we're going to do, but we're not sure how fast we can get them done. And um, they've told me I can't put a lot of the long-term things on the map for competitive reasons. But there, there's more than two things out there that we're working on longer term. Um, but there's, there's, there, we do have competition, which is good. Um, so sometimes long-term can actually go straight to near-term. Um, really, one of our big priorities over the, uh, the next release is to continuing to close the gap with ArcMap functionality. In some parts of the software, Pro has um, surpassed what ArcMap could ever do. However, there are areas where ArcMap is still the only thing that can truly manage the parcel fabric, parcel fabric for land records. Or, um, you know, there's just some little things that came at 2.2, like pause drawing. You know, I couldn't do that. I can only do that in ArcMap, but now I can do that in Pro. So big things um, being added, like um, to support for dimensions, um, but we're also introducing new things that were never in ArcMap. Uh, a really, um, really nice, really slick report um, writer to being able to create reports. Um, also some more map production capabilities with offset printing. Um, we're you know, continuing to support 3D. Some of the voxel scene layer will be shown in the Road Ahead session. Some really impressive um, interactive visual analysis of huge amounts of data. And we're continuing to advance to our, our geoprocessing capabilities, taking advantage of all the processors on these very powerful desktops now to do parallel processing and taking advantage of um, deep learning, machine learning um, with not just image, in, image, image analyst and image analysis. And in the future, that will go to other vector types. The parcel support for parcel management is coming. The first release is coming soon, and you'll be able to fully manage all of your parcels in ArcGIS with ArcGIS Pro. We're looking at um, lots of new things on here, which you can go to the Road Ahead session, or you can um, talk to the team downstairs in the ArcGIS showcase. There's the ArcGIS Pro team. So we saved just a little bit of time for some general questions. And then if there's um, more individual deep questions, you can um, feel free to talk to, to David, Corey, or myself. Um, please feel free to give us um, feedback on this session or any of the sessions you went to. Um, even if you, you know, wait till tomorrow, you can still go back and add, add feedback to any session on um, the Esri event app. Any questions that you want to be said in front of the whole group? Yes. You said you can transfer the name user to single. Can you go back from single back to the name user? So the question is that um, we made reference of going from name user to single use. Can I go from single use to named user? The answer is no. There is not a user experience to do that in my Esri, but if, it's, if you've done that conversion and there's, there's an issue, um, customer service could help you do that. But there is no user experience on my Esri to go the other way. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the question to make sure that I got it right. So, um, recommendations on setting up a laptop to be ready to go for licensing for emergency management that would be offline. Yeah, so like an event happens, we have to go to the emergency operations centers and start up ArcMap. And you're ready to go with ArcMap or ArcGIS Pro. 
Yeah, the internet's down, and so you need to get it all set up before the internet um, goes down. So I would, I'll give you two recommendations, and if um, Corey, David, or anyone else in the room, because you're all dealing with this too, um, or might be dealing with this too, have any recommendations through the, through the group here. Uh, one option is single use. Single use by just getting it already pre-authorized with single use, then it's ready to go, it never needs an internet connection, and it um, just works. The other option would be to, while that machine is online, and while you're configuring it, is to use named user and then take it offline. Do the, you know, just as Corey took his named user license offline, and then it basically, a little license file gets burned into that laptop, and then you can turn it off, wait for the emergency, hope it never happens, but when it does, turn on, turn on the laptop, and Pro just starts up. Okay. So, That'd be tied to that one user, yes. If the other one was offline, that would just be burning the license. It's just offline. Yes. So single use is probably the more efficient way to do it. But then it just sits there. Then it just sits there, yeah. Okay. Now, if you um, have internet connectivity like in some operations center, then you could um, not have to assign licenses until the emergency happened. Then you could assign licenses kind of on the fly take them offline, then go out in the field. But that would require you to have an internet connection like in a command center yeah. um, prior to going out in the field. And, and you can't guarantee that you'll have that internet connection during an emergency. Yeah. <laughs> it is amazing how dependent we are now on that internet connection. Yeah. We think, you know, we'll let Pro work for 24 hours once the internet goes down, but um, many people will be too upset about Instagram being down or, or Snapchat, you know. All right, any other questions? Yes? Yeah, so the question is regarding extensions. Um, the example is Spatial Analyst. I only have two copies of Spatial Analyst. More people may want to use it than two. I can only assign it to two people at a time. And then it's dedicated to those two people. If a third person, if number three and number four needs it, the administrator has to go in and revoke it from number one and number two and assign it to number three and number four. Um, there's no pooling or, or automatic sharing because it is dedicated, with named user licensing, it's dedicated to a person. Right. You can, in ArcMap, you can go in, you can check Spatial Analyst, and then if one is available on your license server, it grabs it for you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's one of the benefits of concurrent use, of being able to kind of have a pooled share, a pooled set of, uh, a, a pool of licenses that are shared kind of on the fly. And that's why we want to support all the different models out there because um, different organizations have different requirements and configurations. Okay, here we go. So there's no options to have like, uh, you currently use the uh, IGS Pro pool of users. Because you're using uh, license manager and you also create uh, options file to make the groups and the uh, extensions or different types of uh, so I think your question is, and correct me if I'm wrong, is can you use concurrent use with ArcGIS Pro? Yes, you can do that. You, you can absolutely do that. Yeah, that's what Corey was trying to show at the beginning, is that while the default license may be named user, but if you've purchased concurrent use desktop, you can convert those to a concurrent use license, the extensions to Spatial Analyst or your desktop standard. You can convert all of them or maybe just some of them and you'll get a provisioning file that you can install on your license manager, and then ArcGIS Pro will use that license manager and behave just like ArcMap would. So the question then about the groups, you would not be using groups. Groups is a capability of ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. You would be using the same way you manage your licenses in ArcMap which, you know, there's no groups. It's just, there, here's the licenses. I don't know who's using them. I don't have any reporting, but um, they're shared. But for our info, concurrent licensing, you can't make groups, you can't get FlexLM files. You still have the FlexLM capabilities, yeah. 
Yeah, through Flex LM, yeah. Yep. Yes? If, uh, if you have to say um, 10 desktop licenses um, with, uh, with our map, you get 10 copies, or I guess 10 licenses and named user. If you, um, if you convert those named users to concurrent, do you, can you, does that pool of named users, do you still, um, do you still have to access uh, ArcMap? Can you access ArcMap and ArcPro? So essentially you have 20 licenses. Okay, so the, the, the question that we always get before, I should have probably turned off the microphone. <laughs> so um, does everyone kind of catch the scenario? So I've, I bought 10 copies of desktop. I'm using 10 ArcMap concurrent uses. That also entitles me to um, 10 Pro licenses. And so if I convert those to concurrent use, it's a separate license feature. So I've got 10 concurrent use arc maps and I have 10 concurrent use pros. Technically, 20 people now could be using the software. 10 using arc map and 10 using pro. Um, that is a, you know, we're not going to go in and prevent you from doing that technically. It's just, it's a, just a byproduct of when we added concurrent use to pro, we kind of just took that on the chin and said, yep, yeah, we may have just lost some license sales because of that, but we're going to hope that the capability of ArcGIS Pro is going to drive everybody eventually to want to use your 10 copies of Pro, and if you really need to support 20 users, you will come back to us and buy 10 more copies. But you're not doing anything wrong or legally or technically if 20 people ac accessed the software. Please don't, though, tell your account manager that <laughs> Rob said I can have 20 people now using the software. <laughs> so I hope I didn't just teach you guys a way to double your licenses. My kids got to go to college. <laughs> All right, we want to thank you for your attendance. I know there's lots of stuff going on, and um, sessions will continue in the afternoon. I know there's lots of um, regional or industry user group events happening tonight. So check the, check the agenda. Um, you could probably go to happy hour in several different rooms tonight if you wanted to. Uh, thanks a lot. Thank you.